Good morning everyone and welcome to the vlog. For those of you who are new here, my name is Siobhan and yeah. I have kind of an update, life update, just stuff to talk about. So before we get into that, it is 8 a.m. I'm just doing some work and yeah, that's about it. So I decided to put eyeliner on today, which I never do. And I was trying to only put a little bit on. I feel like it's not even like that much, but it feels like a lot because I never wear eyeliner. I have been working a little bit and I just had a coaching call with Sean, my other mentor for Arbonne. <sighs> I have been going through the ringer the past week or so, but I'm finally coming out of it. And yeah, I wanna unpack that a little bit, so maybe I'll do that now. Okay, everyone, you're back in the cabinet. I tried to film this in the living room, but um, didn't work out. So we're in the kitchen. I feel like I need to stand so I can like talk about this easier. <sighs> My head is definitely still like all over the place with this, but I am practicing getting things out when I'm feeling them and like not waiting for them to pass, if that makes sense. So that's what this is. Like I said, I've had like kind of a rough week. I, I've been struggling with the feeling of rejection, which is something that I haven't dealt with in a while. And before I get into it, I kind of want to explain like the healing process and like healing never completely ends. You're always, there's always, there's always work to do. You're never going to be like 100% healed. At least I don't think you will be. I think there's always something you can work on. There's always things that'll come up that trigger things that you didn't know existed or there's new wounds that need to be healed. Like it's just kind of life. Picture like an iceberg and you have the tip of the iceberg, which is like the healing that is like the obvious healing that, you know, if you walk around on a day-to-day -day basis, your family and loved ones could pick out like what you need healing from. Those are the things that I would consider like tip of the iceberg, like very obvious, the first things that gotta be taken care of. My journey out to California, that was the tip of my iceberg. That was like the surface level stuff that I needed to cut through. It was hard, 100% it was hard. It wasn't like easy by any means. But looking back, it was easy because it was obvious the things that I needed to work on. Now I'm at a point where I am so self-aware of these surface level triggers that I'm kind of working on the, the iceberg, the part of the iceberg that's under the water. The reason this part of the iceberg is so much harder is because it's not really obvious what things need to be healed. They're not like, there's not just like, they kind of come out of nowhere, I guess. And that's kind of what happened to me recently, like this past week, to be honest. I was doing like a session, a breathwork session, and it was supposed to be like unleashing your infinite potential or something like that. And so the breathwork was supposed to be very, very empowering. I, and for those of you who don't know, I'll go through breathwork just a little bit. It's a technique, like a way of breathing in which it gets you out of your mind and like completely in your body. Like your body will have physical responses to the breath work and it just like, it forces anything that you're holding inside of you, just forces it out. So the first time I did breath work, I felt very, very at peace. The more you do breath work, the more you're surrendering to the practice. So the first time I again, experienced a lot of peace and a lot of just like ease because I also wasn't fully open to the idea, you know, like I, it was kind of intimidating. It was a little scary, a little overwhelming. Maybe like the fourth or fifth time that I did breath work, I felt angry and it was an inner child breath work. The purpose was to connect with your inner child. And I always viewed my inner child as being like sad or hurt because I'm a very sensitive person. Like I will cry at almost anything. Like I, I don't even have to be sad to cry. I will like cry if I'm angry, if I'm scared. So I was fully intending to cry during this breath work and I didn't. I actually felt very angry. I learned that my inner child is very angry for, I'm still trying to figure that out, but yeah, I have like a lot of anger inside of me, apparently. Another significant breath work session is the one that I did last this past Friday. So today is 
Thursday, so a week ago. And it was supposed to be this, like, again, this empowering breath work. And I started crying in the middle of it, like hysterically crying. And I could not stop. I had to leave the event that I was at. Like it was a virtual event. I had to literally leave. And I just started journaling and like writing everything that would like any emotion that was coming to mind. And the thing about like this deep healing, you have to let yourself kind of play victim. Like, and that's something I've struggled with where you're aware. So I'm like very aware when I start to play victim. And so I stop myself, but when you're doing healing work, you have to allow yourself to play victim. You have to do the whole woe is me thing because if that's you validating your inner child, that's you validating the emotions. And when you validate the emotions, you can find out where they stem from. I just started writing down everything that I thought, you know, like every emotion that came up. And what I realized is that I was feeling very rejected by the people that I really care about, like my friends and family. The rejection is stemming from not feeling supported. I didn't feel supported by anyone that I like truly care about or the people that I thought would support me aren't supporting me. And I just, I was hurt. Like I felt very rejected. So going into last night's, I had a coaching session with Paulina last night and then a coaching session with Sean this morning. Going into last night, I literally just started crying. Like I haven't been able to cry all weekend. I just had these feelings inside me. And then like 15 minutes before my session with Paulina, it was like the universe was like, cue the tears. And um, I pretty much went into our session like full of tears. What we worked through was, okay, so I'm feeling this lack of support. What do I need for my relationships to feel supported? And this could be different for, for everyone, but for me personally, I need to feel understood. My inner child has this deep feeling of misunderstanding. And when I feel misunderstood, I feel rejected. And I remember as a kid feeling rejected. So this is very relevant. And I resonated with this message very much going through the healing and you're learning about yourself. Okay. So how do you move forward? Validating the emotion, nourish, nourishing the emotion and nourishing yourself. Not so much anymore, but I used to look very much for not even validation, but just support, like someone to take care of X, Y, Z in my life. Like me not being able, it's like this lack of trust in myself to take care of myself. So I need it from someone else, which isn't true. Hello everyone. Sorry about that. My camera died. I feel like what I was saying was actually ended at a perfect spot. So I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to look back at the footage. I don't think I have to add anything on to what I was saying regarding my healing thing recently, but it's actually the next day. It's Friday. I'm just going to keep this vlog going because I feel like I didn't have a lot of content. Basically worked yesterday and then I door dashed. I am door dashing for about like two hours every other day just to give me a little extra cushion of money. My financial situation is a little like all over the place um, because I'm not getting that solid paycheck every two weeks, but my priority is still paying off my debt. So today... I am working. I have this, what is it called? I guess it's like a class. It's, I'm like very intrigued by this concept. So let me find it. Manifesting using the quantum formula. So the quantum formula, okay, I don't like totally know, but basically it's the idea that we're like, <laughs> I'm, I, I know I'm about to sound insane, but it's this idea that we're living in like a matrix, like, nothing like everything we are living in it's just like fake like we just like created this in our minds like where you're living what you're doing with your life it's all like fake manifesting using the quantum formula is basically acknowledging that and then like manifesting with the idea that like this is all just like fake like it's basically like you've created this illusion for yourself i know it sounds really weird but it was only 25 dollars to sign up and i'm very intrigued so i'm looking into it and yeah that's about the update i'm kind of hungry i'm about to make some hello fresh i have some really good meals this week i'm super excited i love when i like pick out a good meal